But I do think that most humans are going to do better by reincorporating some carbohydrates of some sort back into their diet, just because biochemically, though ketosis is valuable, it should be cycled with periods of, you know, using carbohydrates. It's okay to get carbohydrates in your diet. It's okay to have your blood sugar change. Why? Why, why can't I just... Have you read Thomas Seafried's um, uh, Cancer as a Metabolic Disease? So I'm familiar with it. I haven't read it cover to okay. cover. I haven't but... read it either. <laughs> I can't read it. <laughs> but I've met him a few times, and I've hung out, and, I'm, and, and he, I've gotten the idiot's version, and I'm super impressed by it. What You mentioned three things I'd really like to talk about because I experienced all of these. Um, we, some, some funky heartbeats at night when I'm sleeping. Um, muscle cramps. What a trip. Just the, it's not even like a normal muscle cramp cramp. It's just so bizarre. Um, and then, um, and it's always in bed at night. Like I move my leg funny and all of a sudden it cramps. And then the long-term issues with ketosis that you mentioned, could you touch on those? Oh, and a fourth thing, since you're just holding a bunch of information, why did my water intake quadruple? I'm making that up. Maybe it tripled. Um, when I went, started the carnivore diet. Yeah, lots of things to address there. So I don't agree with everything Tom Seyfried is saying in Cancer is a Metabolic Disease, but some of it is interesting. And if you really dig in, that's a whole rabbit hole we probably don't have time to go down to today. Okay. If you really look at the mitochondrial roots of cancer, there is some evidence that that's going on, but it's hotly debated whether the, the beginning or the, the inception point of cancer is, is DNA damage or is a mitochondrial issue that creates excess free radicals, which then damage nuclear DNA because mitochondria are an intracellular organelle. But, but predicated on all of that is kind of the notion that carbohydrates poison the mitochondria, which I rebel against vehemently. Um, there, are, there are countless examples of humans uh, who are metabolically healthy and hunter-gatherers who eat moderate amounts of carbohydrates and are, remain metabolically healthy. So within the ketogenic circles, there is way too much dogma these days saying that carbs are garbage. You know, carbs are garbage. It's just not true. Like carbohydrates um, are valuable for humans. We don't need them all the time. We should not eat them at the exclusion of more nutrient rich animal organs and meat or get the desiccated organs if we can't get the fresh organs. But the, the notion that carbohydrates cause insulin resistance or metabolic dysfunction is just false. And it's a conflation of studies that are done with processed sugar, uh, like sucrose in, or high fructose corn syrup, or it's, a, it's an inappropriate uh, use of animal studies, which don't really apply to humans. But I've, and I was talking to Gundry about this on the podcast I did with him recently too. Like you can look at the Hadza, you can look at the Mbuti pygmies uh, of, of Africa as well. And they have a lot of their calories as honey for much of the year, depending on the tribe. And I had a period of seven months where I had, I don't know, 75 grams of honey twice a day. So I was probably eating 120 to 140 grams of honey per day. And I had a continuous glucose monitor on for much of that. And then at the end of it, I took my fasting insulin and my C-peptide. I'm completely insulin sensitive after eating honey every single day. So there's a lot of nuance here. And to just say that carbohydrates cause mitochondrial dysfunction or carbohydrates cause insulin resistance is patently false. It's wrong. And it's damaging people because we do benefit from having cyclic inclusion of carbohydrates in our diet. So you, Would you agree though, no refined carbohydrates and no added sugar? Yeah, I don't think you want to do that. And there's actually some really interesting nuanced studies about the difference between sucrose, which is a disaccharide of glucose and fructose or high fructose corn syrup and a raw, a raw unprocessed honey. And they do appear to act differently in mice and they do appear to act differently in humans. And so it's just because it has, quote, sugar in it, like fruit, right, doesn't mean it's bad for humans. I mean, evolutionarily, that, that's a big hurdle to climb. You see the Hadza, and I'm out with them in the bush, and they find this little tiny straw in the tree that this stingless bee goes into. And the honey that these bees make is called canoa, K-A-N-O-A. And we get out their ax, and there's a video of this on my Instagram, and we chop the tree, and then we get all this honey out of the tree. They're not saying oh, I can't eat too much of this. My CGM is going to bump, you know. <laughs> they're not saying, oh, I'm going to become insulin. They're eating as much of it as they can, and yet they're the leanest. They're lean. They're clearly not insulin resistant. They're not metabolically dysfunctional. So to conflate processed sugar, sucrose, high fructose corn syrup with honey is a mistake. 
And to conflate it with fruit is a mistake because they're going to eat berries like they're going out of style. They're not going to stop eating them. They're going to eat as many as they can, and they're going to get them the next day. They're not going to say, oh, I had fruit yesterday. I shouldn't eat any fruit today. They're going to eat fruit and carbohydrates when it's available. And why would something like that that we've evolved with be detrimental for us? That's a huge intellectual hurdle that we have to get over because it doesn't make sense. It doesn't really intuitively we know something is wrong there. So I want to address the things that you mentioned, which are the cramping, the palpitations, the water consumption, and maybe there was a fourth one. But when you are in ketosis, your body is going to shift electrolytes. We know that you need some degree of insulin signaling at the level of the kidney and the distal convoluted tubule and the descending, you know, the descending loop of Henle, et cetera. All these parts of the kidney, all these parts of the glomerulus or the nephron where our body resorbs electrolytes, sodium, potassium, magnesium, chloride, these things. And without insulin signaling, that doesn't really happen in the same way. So you waste a lot of electrolytes when you are in ketosis, which is not a big deal if it's just temporarily and you're cycling it. But if you're doing it long term, people end up having to do massive astronomical amounts of sodium or these electrolyte mm -hmm. replacements, which are just kind of putting a Band-Aid on something that you shouldn't have to do. And I so, crave salt like crazy. I've never craved salt my entire life. I'm not even into salt, and all of a sudden now I'm craving salt. Yeah, so if you add back carbohydrates, it fixes it immediately. Okay. Uh, it's not to say that ketosis is not valuable and doesn't have benefits, autophagy or you know, these uh, you know, epigenetic benefits as a uh, histone deacetylase inhibitor, etc., or... Isn't, isn't going to have an effect, perhaps a hormetic effect on the mitochondria, but it's not a good thing to do long term, and it's very hard to sort of support that long term in terms of electrolytes. I've heard of people eating upwards of 15 grams of, sodium, of salt a day, and it's just that's a massive amount to sort of to shore up or to support this loss of electrolytes. So the, and then so many things are connected with this, right? The palpitations you're getting, the heart racing is the same thing. It's an electrolyte abnormality due to inappropriately extended periods of ketosis. Mm. So you can imagine evolutionarily, if you are not eating carbohydrates, you are starving. <laughs> because carbohydrates were generally available, at least in the tropical regions, right around the equator, which is where most of us were for the majority of our evolution as humans. They were available year round or for much of the year. Now, getting to the northern latitudes, perhaps not all year round in the winter, but our ancestors were going to get carbohydrates throughout the year. and so. To, to consistently avoid carbohydrates is basically giving your body the, the signal, hey, you haven't gotten anything to eat. Even though you're getting meat and, and fat, getting some calories, you are giving this kind of signal. And, and it can be very beneficial long term. I think there's a balance. There's an importance of balance here, right? You need to, you know, sometimes you're anabolic, sometimes you're catabolic. There's this autophagy benefit, etc. But to always be kind of in that catabolic state or pseudo catabolic state of ketosis comes with these issues and then that water thing is connected probably with the fact that you're eating so much salt you're getting to be super thirsty or you're wasting water in your kidneys in a certain way based again on this ketosis